I won't hire you. There's just one thing. Uh, I can't pay you. Well, that's, that's a problem. My assistant, Sharona, won't let me take any more cases for free. But doesn't she work for you? Well, it's complicated. Here's the thing. I don't have any money, but I can pay you in trade. Uh, if you help me, I can help you. What are we, what are we talking about here? I can get you reinstated. Reinstated? I know you want your badge back more than anything. And I already talked to Professor Emery about your situation. Professor em Eugene Emery at Garland College? That's right. I'm in his class. Oh, my God. I just read his book. Oh, yeah. We have a test on that next week. It's, it's wonderful. What's it about? Well, it's an argument for tort reform. Professor Emery feels that we could eliminate all superfluous litigation if we cap punitive damages and hold the plaintiff liable for any court expenses. But I'm sure you can get out of the test because you're grandmother. Right. Whew. But you, you did talk to Professor Emery, to Eugene, Emery, about me? Yeah, he said he could definitely get you reinstated. He guaranteed it. How? I'll tell you when my grandmother's home, safe and sound. Do we have a deal? Well, you know, I, I could always call Professor Emery myself. But I won't. Not a word. She's alone in the house. Now, nobody is in the room but her. Julie, we need 45 seconds, okay? You can do it. Okay. Hello? This is the Lightning Brigade. All the power to the people. Uh, okay. We have your grandmother. Is she, is she all right? She's fine. And if you want her to stay that way, do exactly what we say. And don't try to keep us on the phone, Julie. We're not stupid. Um, well, okay, but can I, can I talk to her? I said she's fine. Don't you trust me? Yeah, but she has a, a heart condition. Um, she, she needs her medication. Then you better listen carefully. Here's what I need you to do. What? Do you, do you want me to hang up? Is that, is that what you want? Who's there? Oh, you blew it, honey. <sighs> 41 seconds. We missed him. She had something on her cheek. Do you think they'll call again? I don't think so. Sharona, watch him. Um, th that wasn't the police. I'm, I'm just really nervous, okay? I swear. Don't be nervous. Here's what we need you to do. There are hundreds of homeless people in the Mission District. They suffer needlessly while just blocks away the rich stuff their fat faces in fancy restaurants. Okay, we're, we're not rich. Shut up and listen. Tonight, we're redistributing wealth. I want you to buy every homeless person in the Mission District a turkey dinner. Tur turkey dinner? Just do it. And Grandma will be home before you know it. Okay, well, what time do you... She didn't get it. <sighs> they want turkey dinners for all the homeless people in the Mission District. What the hell's going on? <laughs> We got her. We got her back. They dropped her off two blocks away. Call EMS. It's me. How's Grandma Parlo doing? Oh, she's a tough old bird. But she can't ID the kidnappers? Blindfolded the whole time. But she thinks she's heard their voices before. She just can't remember where. Well, this didn't hurt her. No, she was treated pretty well, considering. They even kept saying, be careful, when they carried her out of the house. Yeah, they fed her pizza. All the pizza she could eat. I can't even get pizza at my house. And get this. They played opera. The old lady said she could hear it through the door. Kidnappers are into opera. What kind of... Look who's awake. <laughs> are you ready for your test? Piece of cake. Mrs. Parlow, how you feeling? Oh, don't worry about me. I heard what happened to you in the library. It just means we're getting close. Somebody's getting nervous, Mrs. Parlow. So now I want to try to find out 
exactly where they took you. Oh. Sharona, do you have that map? All right, but I, I told the chief of police I, I couldn't help him. I had an Afghan over my head. Maybe we'll be able to figure it out anyway. We're here. What are you doing? Just, just smoothing it out. What else do you remember about the trip? Well, like I said, I didn't see a thing. Did you hear anything? No, I'm sorry. Did you smell anything? You know, it's a, now that you mention it, I did. I smelled fresh bread. Bread? Oh, my God, there's a, there's a big bakery on Clarkson Boulevard. You can smell it when you drive past. Oh. And then we stopped for four or maybe five minutes. Why so long? Were they getting gas? No. Could have been a drawbridge. Oh, my God, Third Street drawbridge across Channel. Then just a few minutes later, we got to their house, and it was exactly 8 o'clock. How do you know that? My watch was beeping. You see, I, I said it so that I don't forget to take my ticker pills. And, and it was raining. Are you sure? It wasn't raining all week. Listen, Missy, I think I know what rain feels like, and that's what I felt when they carried me from the van into the house. And, you know, that wasn't all. Cough drops. Cough drops? I distinctly smelled cough drops. Eucalyptus trees. They smell like cough drops. Hey, Carol? What's going on? Nothing. Comes with a mind of their own. German engineering, my ass. I don't see Strike me pretty. You do recognize them. Oh, yes. I, they were here just last week. Remember? They came about the cat. Two weeks ago, Nana took in a stray cat. It didn't have a collar. We didn't know who it belonged to. We were worried about you. I ran off some flyers and put them up, and the next day, this couple called us. Carol and Carol Maloney. They own an antique store on Granis Boulevard. It's five blocks away. I knew there was something sneaky about them. You know where I should have stabbed them? Yeah, I, I think we do. Their cat had run away a few days ago, so they came over, but it wasn't theirs. Is that it? They just looked at the cat. Did they say or do anything unusual? No, they were just here a few minutes. We never saw them again. Mr. Monk, I don't understand. They're antique dealers. What do they want with Nana? And what's all this crap about turkey dinners? I don't know yet. The kidnappers said, be careful. When they carried Mrs. Parlow out of the house, they weren't worried about her. They were worried about that chair. What chair? The chair she was tied to. That's what this whole thing has been about. That's my grandmother's chair. I recognize it. She's lying. People make false claims about pieces like this all the time. You like opera? Yes, we love it. Is that a crime? Should be. Mm, Captain, please. Mm. Tell me about the chair, Mr. Maloney. I'd be happy to. It is a fan back Windsor, an original finish built in 1774. Dealers like us wait our whole lives for a piece like this. You note the engraving on the back in the shape of Monticello. Mm -hmm. This chair was personally handcrafted by Thomas Jefferson. In fact, there is some evidence to support the fact that he sat in this very chair while he drafted the Declaration of Independence. Does it swivel? How much is it worth? Two, maybe 2.5. Million? Yes, Lieutenant Million. Actually, we'll find out for sure next week. We're auctioning it off. I don't imagine any of you will be bidding on it. Well, where did you get it? I'll tell you where they got it. They stole it from my grandmother's house. She's right. Your cat ran away. You saw the flyer, and you went to their house looking for it, and that's where you saw the chair. You must have recognized it right away, but what could you do? You couldn't offer to buy it. They might have had it appraised, and that would have ruined everything. Couldn't steal it. Cops would have been looking for it. Never be able to sell it. Then you had an idea. It was brilliant, really. You kidnapped Mrs. Parlow and carried her out of the house with the chair, made some ridiculous ransom demand, and then let her go. 
You figured anyone would be so relieved to have their Nana back that they wouldn't even remember the missing chair. Prepare to be disappointed, Mr. Monk. I can prove provenance. I have a receipt. We bought the chair from a dealer in Baton Rouge four years ago. The poor sap, he didn't know what he was sitting on. Literally. <laughs> I bet it's a forgery. Forgery is a serious offense. It is a Class C felony. Or B. B or C, but... The receipt will have to speak for itself. Unfortunately, the dealer has since passed on. Oh, how convenient. So, can you prove that the chair belongs to you? Hmm? No. Interesting. Huh. Okay, well, until you can, I suggest you all leave. It's my dinner time. Well, that could have gone better. Can't we do anything? I cannot question them officially unless you've got something, anything, to prove that you own that chair. Do you have anything on paper? No. Nana bought it at a flea market 20 years ago. She can't even remember where. Do you have a picture of it? I checked all our photo albums. Nothing. Wait a minute. Listen. Listen to what? Listen to you. You're not sneezing. You haven't sneezed at all since we got here. That's true. The Maloney said they had a cat that ran away. That's why they went to Julie's house. Right. They lied. They never had a cat. Otherwise, you'd be sneezing your head off. You're right. You're right. I'm lost, as usual. If the Maloney's never had a cat, why did they go to your house in the first place? They must have known about the chair somehow. Do you still have a copy of that flyer? Uh, I think so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the prettiest picture I've ever seen. Hi, folks. Remember us? I was wondering if we could bother you again. Thank you. Congratulations, you solved the case. Well, I had a little help. Hi, Nana. Guess what? I'm quitting law school. I'm buying my own bakery. Yes, we can afford it. We can afford anything we want. I love you, Nana. It's jungle out there. Disorder and confusion everywhere. No one seems to care. Well, I do. Hey, who's in charge here? It's jungle.